my name is Connor Quinlan, and in this review, I'm going to be reviewing the Nikon 16 to 35 millimeter f-stop forward lens. Now, I'm going to be doing this reviews. So I'm going to talk about my first thoughts of the lens, build quality and stuff like that, image quality. I want to look at sample images on um, screen flow for that, and also autofocus and what my opinions are on this lens in the field. First thing I'm going to talk about is the look and feel of the lens. Now, the look at this lens is very sleek, very nice. It's very clean. Throughout the entire lens, there's not too many buttons or knobs or anything like that. Um, the, the zoom rings and the focus rings are very smooth and they're very spread apart, very easy to grab and very large. Um, one thing that's a little bit strange about this lens is how large it is. It is an f-stop 4 lens and this lens is just as large and as heavy as the 17 to 35mm f-stop 2.8 lens, which is kind of strange. Now, it's not necessarily a big deal, but it is quite a bit larger than one would think it have to be, and very heavy too. Other than that though, like I said, I do like the length of the lens because it's very easy to grab focus rings and such with it. Um, it also has the VR feature, which um, the previous Nikon 70-35mm did not. Um, that's not really something that you need on a wide-angle lens in my opinion, but if you do happen to handhold the shot in low light, then it can be um, a little bit useful for something like that. One thing that um, I didn't really necessarily, that I found a little strange about this lens is that it doesn't feel as well built as I thought it would. I thought it'd feel a little more like the 14 to 24 millimeter, which it does look like it feels like that. But if this one, this particular lens, feels a little more plasticky than the 14 to 24, um, the focus ring also doesn't feel quite as smooth as the 14 to 24 millimeter, which is a little bit of a shame. But once again, this lens is still very well built, and probably could take anything nature could dish out on it. This has got um, a great range for landscape photographers, and this is definitely the ultimate lens for any landscape photographer, covering ultra, ultra wide angle, all the way up to standard wide angle for any type of landscape photography. Definitely more useful than the 14 to 24 millimeter, which is uh, kind of like a specialty lens for landscape photography or for uh, low light wide angle sport photography and stuff. The only other disadvantage to this lens is the f-stop. It has an f-stop of 4, which is kind of strange for a pro lens. Most of the time, pro lenses in this uh, class have an f-stop of 2.8. So that's a little bit of a shame, but once again, like I said, it's more of a landscape lens, so a uh, larger f-stop wasn't really necessary for this lens, in my opinion. But for those who wanted to use a lens like this for low-light photography, um, you know, you're not going to be able to stock down as far as the 17-35mm lens, which is a bit of a shame. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I am going to put this on a camera body so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Right, here it is on an Nikon D3X, and you can really get an idea for the size of this lens. It really is quite immense. Very, very large, just as large as the 17-35mm lens. Um, the only the nice thing about how large it is though is, like, like I said earlier, the zoom rings and focus rings are far apart and really easy to grab. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to go over to the screen flow and check out some sample images taken with this lens. Alright, now we're going to take a look at the image quality of the Nikon 16 to 35mm f-stop 4 lens. We're going to look at center sharpness first at 16mm. This is wide open at f-stop 4 and the center sharpness is very good um, at f-stop 4 f-stop 5.6 stop down a little bit it is a little bit better and we have the optimum of sharpness in the center by f-stop 5.6 here's 4 again not quite as much detail in the trees but when we stop down 5.6 it's tack sharp at that point and doesn't get any sharper than that and f-stop 8 is about the same sharpness as you can see we're going to take a look at the corner sharpness now and this is at f-stop 4 and as you can see this is incredible performance. Now remember this is on a Nikon D3X with 24.4 megapixels you know and even wide open this thing this lens is performing great. It's sharp almost all the way out to the corners. You can see it's only a little bit soft at the absolute far end of the corners of this lens in this picture and so what an, it is an incredible performer, and especially a lot better than the 17 to 35 millimeter lens, which is 
significantly softer, even at f-stop 4. When we stop it down to 5.6, we do see an increase in sharpness, and by 5.6, the entire frame is tack sharp, which is truly amazing. You know, Nikon has come a long way from its older lenses and has really increased the sharpness. Um, Canon and other lens companies just can't compete with lenses like this. They're so sharp. Then at f-stop 8, we've got the optimum sharpness um, throughout the entire frame. This is definitely the ultimate lens for the landscape photographer because just simply how sharp this lens is. Even for the low-light photographer, even though it doesn't go up to f-stop 2.8, it performs great at f-stop 4. Although for those of you who do extreme low-light photography, you might want to consider the 17-35mm, even though it is quite a bit softer in the corners. Here we are at 35mm, and we're going to look at the center sharpness first. Now, the center sharpness at 35mm is not as good of a performer as it was at 16mm. When we stop down to 5.6, you can definitely see that increase in sharpness um, overall. Even in the Saguaro, you can see how it's a little soft here, and then it's quite a bit sharper at 5.6. And at f-stop 8, it's about the same as it was at 5.6. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the 35mm end of this lens is actually the worst performing focal length. Um, it is softer in the corners at 35mm than any other focal length, which is surprising because you would think the 16mm end would be the worst performing, but in this case it's the 35mm end. But even though it's the worst performing end, it still performs extremely well. Here we've got one of the corners at f-stop 4, um, pretty much sharp sharp image. I mean it is a bit blurry but it's very sharp. A lot sharper than the 17 to 35 millimeter at, at the uh, longer end on the 17 to 35. When we stop down to 5.6 you can see a good increase in sharpness flare in the images here. Now as you can see there's quite a bit of substantial flare on this lens. I was kind of surprised about that. It's The flare is actually a little bit worse than the 17 to 35 millimeter in my opinion but um, you know that's not really that big of a deal just keep the lens keep the sun out of the corner of the lens and you won't have a problem and it's the same results basically for 35 millimeter or it's a little bit worse than the 17 to 35 millimeter lens but you know that's not a huge deal just keep the lens away or the sun away from the corners of the lenses and here we are at 16 millimeters looking at distortion. Now there are mountains, so that's kind of misleading, but if you look at just the horizontal line right here, all from here all the way across, you can see that there is some significant barrel distortion. Um, you know, it's not horrible, it's not as bad as it could have been, but it is pretty significant. And it's something that you will probably want to correct if you're taking pictures of a vertical horizon like the Grand Canyon in Photoshop. At 35 millimeter, there's a lot, not nearly as much distortion as the long end, but it is a little bit of a pin cushion here, although it's not very noticeable, so you don't really have to worry about that. Finally, the last thing that we're going to look at is vignetting of this lens. And here it is at 16 millimeter. And you can see the vignetting is pretty significant on this lens at the largest f-stop, although not that bad. We have to remember that this image is a little bit con more contrasty. Um, uh, since it is a very bright day and stuff like that, but it, it does have vignetting at the largest f-stop, although not terrible. By 5.6, a lot of that vignetting goes away, um, luckily. And then by 8, you've got um, absolutely no vignetting left in the picture. So the vignetting on this lens is pretty well controlled. Um, you've got a little bit at f-stop 4, but other than that, at the other f-stops and other focal lengths, you don't see much vignetting at all. Overall, the performance of this lens is really spectacular. Um, flare distortion and stuff like that were not, not top of the line necessarily, but the sharpness certainly is. I mean, especially at 16 millimeter, this lens is sharp from corner to corner, much better performer than the 17 to 35 millimeter lens. Now, before I go on the field test, I'm going to talk a little bit about the focusing speed. Of course, this is a very fast lens, focuses very quickly. Just to give you a quick example, here it is from minimum focusing distance out to infinity. Pretty quick, very quiet, and that's, that's pretty much all you need to know about it. It is a landscape lens, so focus speed isn't really that big of a deal. Now, in the field, this lens is absolutely spectacular. It's one of the, it's the sharpest lens in its class. Um, when compared especially to the 17-35mm to lens, 
this lens really does own it. Um, you know, it's a lot sharper than that lens. Even at f-stop 4, if you compare those two, these two lenses at f-stop 4, the 16 to 35 millimeter is way better. Um, has much sharper images. For those of you who are into low light photography, you might want to actually consider getting this lens over the 17 to 35, even though the 17 to 35 millimeter has an f-stop of 2.8, simply because of the amazing image quality that this lens can give you. Um, for the landscape photographer, the choice is really simple. I would definitely get the 16 to 35 millimeter. Not only does it offer a nicer range, but it offers sharpness that is uncomparable with any other lens. And this has been a review of the Nikon 16 to 35 millimeters.